This is the book of Luke chapter 21 verse 10. Then said he unto them. So lock you. I'm going to start up. This is Luke chapter 21 verse 7. And they asked him saying master. But when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Verse 8, and he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. Verse 9, But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Verse 10, Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Verse 11, The point. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. I want to start off by giving all praises, all honor, all glory to Kohalayim, La Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and sincerity, as well as risking their lives and freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwap, as, the, as well as the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this is an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad, the land of the other nations appearing like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth. To you, I say Shalom. Brother Yahweh Sop out of the GMS Cleveland Church, fellow servant, coming to you with another lesson, the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Um, I came out with this because, you know, there's multiple scriptures that talk about how you can you tell the time we're in. Because as a, a prophet or, or, or spiritual, um, a spiritual creature, you're supposed to be... Uh, looking for certain signs you know that's one of the beauties about you know the uh the row you know these scriptures is a living book you know because it it talks about uh it it, it, it foretells <laughs> it prophesies it tells you what's to come beforehand and um you know it was talking about um like in verse 11 it says dire uh it'd be earthquakes which you've seen um, they haven't been talking about too many right now but you got brothers that follow the earthquake patterns um it says Famines and pestilences. Um, the CV is a pestilence. You, you know, um, it was a. I think the brother from um, Men of Valor did a video about it's a plague in India right now. I think called the Black something. Um, famines is usually food, but you know, famines is a shortage of anything. You know, right now you got a gas shortage. You got um, chicken shortage as well. Uh, and um, it says no signs that are in heaven. The sign it said, fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. You know, it's been more chariot sightings within the last couple of years than I think. That's why Esau is just basically coming out with, you know, brothers was just, you know, that was the spirit. Brothers been coming out about certain topics. So when enough brothers speak on it, unless the spirit move me, I, I rarely, you know, jump on, you know, even though that's the spirit that, you know, that's what I noticed. Uh, but a lot of brothers was going in about, like I said, because. You know, I think it was 60 Minutes went into about the chariots. That's a sign in heaven. So another sign is a, is a shortage, another famine. Because it's funny because, like I said, you had certain states that was having a gas shortage. And uh, Lord and behold, watch this. It just popped up on my feed. And it's funny because, you know, they're about to create some very, very dangerous times. You know, um, Scripture talks about in the book of Matthew, um, you know, uh, iniquity abounded and the love of many shall wax cold you know america's gonna show you how much of a uh you know when you take the time to really think about the movie the purge that wasn't in the uk or uh or in russia or china or you know like the movie hostel in holland and those shit like that that was in america because at the end of the day these people are so vain you know for the book of uh i think it's it first timothy talks about uh you know, in the last days, people are going to be covetous and bolsters, proud. You know, I noticed that when you watch YouTube or, you you know what I mean? Like people, you got people so stuck off into TikTok or, you know what I mean? That they not even paying attention to what the fuck going on in the world. And that's a scary thing because when the Lord actually make them aware of it, you know, the amount of Lamborghinis you get. You know, I forgot what brother made that thing. I think it was the brother Brock Allen from LA. That's a funny brother. He was like. 
<laughs> Mayweather gonna be mad to the motherfucker with this gas shortage come. <laughs> and now we talk about a gas shortage. He was like, shit. He can be like, I got all them cars, can't put no gas in this car. He ain't got no hybrid car or no, no Tesla. He got Lambos. Well, he might have it. Who's to say what he got? You know, I don't follow him like that. But not to like digress and be running off at the mouth and just be rambling. You know, I say this because this is this is powerful. On top of, you know, a gas shortage here. And you don't know if I can't say if it really happened or if it's something that Esau doing. But at the end, they they telling you, you know what I mean, that potentially, put it like this, based on them putting it out there and those people going on them frantic, just buying all that gas, that could have created a shortage. You know, I remember during that time when that guy shot up uh, in L.A. when he he was shooting at that concert and he had them buck stops. Uh, and uh, basically the thing to convert the rifle into a, 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 a automatic and basically, bump stocks. And basically, after they said what it was, they released it in the news, those things sold out. I'm pretty sure, I think Trump was in office when that happened. So, you know what I mean? These people know how to advertise to you. You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, they, you could have created the, the gas shortage based on them saying it ain't no gas. But they're also saying now you got companies being told to stop Drilling for oil because now they want to save the planet. So this is our CNN. I only got one more scripture. It says oil companies told to stop drilling not to save the planet. It says London, the International Energy Agency. So this ain't just one company. This is an agency that oversees the energy. You don't let these people do this for the last 50 years. <laughs> Tectonic plates shifting and motherfucking sinkholes going all into the earth just destroying the planet. But now you want to talk about something. Stop drilling. The International Energy Agency, which was founded by rich industrial nations after oil shocks in the 1970s to promote secure and affordable energy supplies, says the world's, world needs to stop drilling for oil and gas right now to prevent a climate catastrophe. In order to reach net zero carbon emissions by two, 2050, the influential group said in Report Tuesday that investments in new fossil fuel supply projects must stop immediately and no new coal-fired plants should be approved. Approved. And the thing is this, it's not coincidence that you got Tesla right now and you got uh you know the uh the hyperlink, not the hyperlink, yeah. I think that shit is called the hyperlink with the speed um train that's up under the the, the um you know like they they built it in the tubes. I, I think the dude Richard Branson had one, I think Elon Musk had one. You know, it's not a coincidence that they made all this money off of all this oil that's actually Utilize for the earth for the tectonic plates again, <laughs> as opposed to just trying to make it run your car when it was other options to, you know, to to actually uh, actually make an engine or allow an engine to function. You didn't have to necessarily use fossil fuels or actually like, you know, uh, oil. It's just the fact that you know you got these certain people, these these Edomite families that got super super wealthy off of that oil. It says dramatic recommendations are part of a detailed strategy that the IEA says will result in the world achieving the Paris Climate Agreement goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. But when you go to Agenda 2030, basically that's the purpose of them, like uh, taking back all the land. Like nobody's gonna have private land, so you won't, you know, basically to be like with these smart cities and how they'll be able to monitor and you know. You know, that's what they, I forgot what that shit that called, but with the whole emissions, like, uh, you know, like with the EPA and whatnot, like if you do any kind of HVAC, you know, companies that deal with certain uh, products, like the job that I, I deal with now, like they deal with um, disposal of certain um, um, hazardous and non-hazardous um, chemicals. And, uh, you know, if they don't do that properly, they could be fined. And those fines are not little fines. Those fines are can lead to millions of dollars. Just like with the HVAC, that Freon can actually destroy the atmosphere. It's, it's supposed to be able to destroy oxygen. And the longer you got that just going off, the more that they're supposed to get fined. To the point where somebody could go to jail. Prison. But I forgot the agency that they're trying to set up, set up basically to tax uh, like everybody. <laughs> So, like I said, again, this is not coincidence that these people coming out with the, uh, what did I just say? 
Oh, so like it. So, uh, anyhow, it says to prevent that, the IEA says these milestones must be hit. Immediately. Immediate stop to new gas and oil projects. No new sales of fossil fuel boilers. Uh, 70% of electricity generation from the solar and wind by 2050. The global electricity sector reaches net zero emissions by 2040. No sale of new internal combustion engine passenger cars by 2035. <laughs> there are major economic benefits to be had according to the IEA if the world follows the group's roadmap. Yada, yada, yada. President Joe Biden has committed the United States to reducing his greenhouse gas. And that's why he's supposed to made that statement uh, when people thought it was a joke when they was basically saying how much beef you could consume. You know, and then I think it went down to like one patty every month or some shit like that. That's why they're going into, this is another reason why they're going into the, all the um, lab grown meat and all that. Yeah, this, so basically, again, it's scarcity you know, a, a shortage, scarcity of certain goods, products, and one is going to be the gas. Because at the end of the day, if this agency is a worldwide, because listen to what it said, it said the oil rich nations. So that wasn't just America and whatnot. This is like, you know, this has to do with that new world order. <laughs> this is like Psalms 83. So eventually, you know what I mean? So uh, the, the scripture I had was, uh, you know, and it's just funny that this came at a time when you already talking about America has a gas shortage going on right now. So this is the book of Psalms, chapter uh, 2. I mean, I said Psalms. I must be really, really tired. Salakia, 2 Ezra, chapter 6, verse 22. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown and the, Salakia, unsown, the full storehouses shall, be, shall suddenly be found empty. And it's funny because I remember... You know, America's supposed to came up with a way to actually, um, I forgot what it's called, but you got a lot of shell oil. Shell oil, it was oil that couldn't necessarily be used for, um, it, it wasn't like regular oil. It wasn't like crude oil. So they came up with a process to actually use that shell oil. So how are we having a gas shortage? Supply and demand, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then, like I said, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be food. You know, a famine can be, the famine is a lack of something, flat out. And when it comes to lacks of, lack of things, when you go to Second Ezra, chapter 16, it tells you what people are going to be doing. You know, they're going to be spoiling one another for your goods. It tells you that in the book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and 16, you know what I mean? And persecution, I mean, you know, <laughs> it talks about persecution, but it talks about, you know, you know, neighbor fight neighbor, you know, for your good, spoiling your house. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, these things are coming. It's not a coincidence that these people literally uh, kept on making a statement about a violent summer, a violent summer. And then during the summer is when they're going to release the, uh, the, the, the purge forever, forever purge or whatnot. So, you know, I think it's around July, too. It's always... I think the purges always come out around, um, you know, Independence Day. You know, the weekend's holiday. <laughs> these people supposedly celebrating their independence, these Edomites. When you come to find out they're not really even independent, they still, you know, <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, I just found that interesting and, you know, that second Ezra chapter 6 popped in my mind. Because, like I said, I just was like, wow, hold up. If you talk about it's a gas shortage, but now you got... These people that regulate the gas industry, it's all going to agenda twenty thirty and all that, you know. So, yeah, prepare to um, because at the end of the day, ultimately is Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. So prepare for more things to be taken away, you know. I forgot where that scripture is, but it talks about uh when the Lord uh brings a sword onto the earth. As far as when he um, I don't want to butcher it. But, you know, at the end, they talks about the Lord bringing, uh, you know, the famine, you know. And with the with the lack of gasoline and whatnot, that's going to bring the lack of food to a lot of people, lack of, lack of jobs. <laughs> look at look how cold they is. Look at, you know, the, how the Lord set this up. He literally let people rock out with this unemployment for a whole year or something. And then turned around, I was like, no. You know, what is <laughs> what is a lack of jobs still? 
So uh, if you're a so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, Seminole, Indian, West Indian, or Haitian, I implore you to come back to the law, statutes, commandments of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, shall be destroyed. With that, I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to Ko Haloyim, La Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Bashem, Rahagodosh, Bukatah. So I'm honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the Akim across the four corners of the earth, pushing his truth with faith and sincerity, as well as risking their lives and their freedom to do so. Shalom to the Akwat and the Akim out there listening and learning. Lord willingly, this was an edifying video. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners scattered abroad in the land of the other nations, appearing like the other nations, but subscribing to this truth. So you all say Shalom. Until next time, I'm able to come with another lesson. Shalom, Shalom. Waffle up a ball. Shalom.